So it is later in the day of the cardio video that got posted what is to you now yesterday. If you can follow along, who gives a shit? Plan is to thrash arms at Planet Fitness, All right? The time is eight o'clock, so the why, you know, I got three options of gyms that I've sort of been looping between. The Y of Planet Fitness and then Metro Fitness in Worthington, right? The Y, I think, closes at eight or nine, I think nine. So that would only leave me an hour, which, I mean, it could be done, right? Like I could get an arm pump in an hour, but not ideal. You know, I want at least uh, a solid hour and a half. And then the Metro Fitness, 20-ish minute drive, 25 minute drive, I don't need to go that far just for some uh, some dumbbells and the cables. So the Planet Fitness is going to be perfect. Going to start with triceps like normal. Uh, I think I'll change it up a little bit. I'll get into that when I start. But typically, for the most part, I always like starting off with a movement where I'm strong, right? chest, I like starting off on bench. Back, typically I've been starting off with heavy rows. Uh, haven't really been doing it as of late, but when I was squatting, which squats will come back, don't worry. You know, for quads, you know, start off with heavy squats. But, you know, some muscles, I'll go about it, or some days I'll go about it a different way. Maybe start off with more of a squeezing movement. Uh, but it's, for the most part, you're probably best off going heavy when you're the strongest, right in the beginning of your lift. But uh, whatever, we'll, we'll talk about that once we're actually in there. So once triceps get pumped up after, you know, 11 sets of eh, probably mainly pushdowns, but they've got a dip machine there that I like as well. So I'll probably spam that for a bit too. Biceps is just going to be, well, what do you fucking think it's going to be? It's just going to be a bunch of curls. Right? Uh, I'll definitely do a variety. Perhaps. Yeah, I'll throw in a couple. Dumbbell, cable, preacher machine. Maybe a drop set into some lighter easy bar curls at the end. Because uh, the Planet Fitness, they have easy bars, right? Where it's just preloaded with weight. But it only goes up to 60 pounds. So, doing that for an actual set... Like when I'm fresh, that might be a little bit too light. But let's say I pre-exhaust with the, uh, you know, dumbbell curling the 40s or the 50s. Then if I jump onto the easy bar that's 60 pounds, I should be able to get a pretty decent burn within maybe, you know, eight or 12 reps. But you know, I have a basic idea of what I'm going to do. But I'll wait until I get in there, and you know, sort of. Uh, I don't want to say let the machines speak to me, it's not that spiritual, but more so just do whatever I think is going to be good, right? Now, if you're a beginner lifter, like if it's if this is your first few months, you know, going to the gym, I'd say you're probably better off, you know, following a relatively strict routine just to get, you know, training experience under your belt and, you know, understand how different movements feel, like make sure you try a lot of different stuff. But once you've done that for a while and you have a pretty good grasp on how to actually get a good pump, then you can start, you know, using your best judgment and doing movements that you think are going to be most beneficial for you, right? There's no, uh, there's no perfect routine for everybody, right? Everybody's going to react to training differently. So you sort of have to take it upon yourself to figure out what works best for you, you know, because if you just listen to a bunch of random shit that people say works... Who knows? Maybe it'll work. Maybe you'll get huge. But more than likely, you'll just end up, you know, following what they're telling you to do. You're not going to really get a deep understanding, right? Like, the more you can actually... I've been saying the word understanding a hundred times. The more you fucking understand what you're doing and why, the easier it's going to be for you to uh, to execute the sets properly. Like, let's say doing a, a, a fucking bicep curl, Right? If you're just watching someone do a bicep curl and you're going to copy what they're doing, right? You might just throw the weight up and 
let it come back down pretty quick, you know, not uh, not too thoughtfully throughout the rep. But if you're more of a uh, knowledgeable lifter, right, you might know to spend an extra little moment at the top of the rep and really try to fucking squeeze your bicep and get a crazy flex, which will definitely give you a good pump. Holy shit, already five minutes in on the, on the way to the gym car talk. Let's stop fucking talking and get in there. If you get big enough, which honestly, this level of size and strength isn't that crazy, what's going to happen is the straight bar pushdown with a typical cable stack like this, it's just not going to be heavy enough to really get like just basic reps out where you're actually going to get legitimately fatigued in like 15 to 20, right? I don't know how many I could get if I just did the normal stack, I don't know, at least Probably, if I was really going for reps, maybe 40. No need to find out. That's way too many fucking reps. So, I'll start with more of a squeezing movement. It's, I mean, the rope is fine. Uh, this is kind of cool. Just two extra long handles. And I kind of start underhand. Like, I'll come to the top underhand. But then when I finish, it almost turns like sideways. Just try it, you know, see how it feels. But I think two sets here. Now the whole stack, I mean, sure it's the whole stack, but it's light enough where I can still focus on really squeezing, right? Like I'm not just trying to burn out and pump out reps, right? I'll almost try to hold it at the bottom, at least for just a moment. So let's do a couple of these. There we go. Oh, oh, that felt pretty good. Uh, two more, then we'll move on. Slight drop set. Oh, whatever. Oh, All right, let's uh, let's do some dips. Those felt really good. So that's what I meant by changing up the beginning. You know, rather than just doing a normal push down and going for you know heavy weight and reps, started off with a lighter movement and really squeeze. Because one thing that'll happen for me, I don't know if you can relate to this, but by the time my triceps are fully pumped, I can't even like fully straighten my arm. Like I can only get to like here. Just, I don't know why, it just won't fucking tighten up that much. So for me, you know, doing a movement like this or the rope in the beginning of the lift, I can really flex it a lot harder than, that, than at the end, right? If I were to do this at the end of the lift, then it would really just be more of a going through the motions type movement rather than get to the bottom and really contract. But let's just focus on the dips. With the dips, I'm kind of going to do the opposite of what I was... Well, actually, no, this... That's the same problem with the fucking cable stacks. You know, eventually you're just going to be maxing out machines like they're nothing. It depends on the machine, but like this dip machine... I wouldn't mind an extra 100 pounds. So, you know, I'll probably just burn out. Honestly, I think I can get about 20 reps. But by those last 10, you know, I'm doing partials. I'm really just fucking feeling the squeeze. So, one little tip. Try your best not to use your pecs when you do this. Now, it, like, if I were to tell a beginner to get on this machine, like, who never lifted before, and tell him to, you know, go heavy, he's going to be using so much fucking chest because he's going to be bending over, like, hunching. I mean, all I can really tell you is try to relax your whole fucking, I guess, what we even call this train of muscles. Your pressing muscles. Like, try not to flex your chest. Don't get any delts involved. Just focus on straightening your fucking elbows. So, probably three sets of the whole stack. 
Maybe more. Or maybe less, depends on how it feels. Slight drop set. Oh. All right. Let's move on to uh, our something. Let's do something. I used to do this all the time. Uh, you know, it's more of a lighter squeezing movement. So I don't know if I'll do multiple of these, but I'll just do one. So you get two cables, you know, yay far apart, and you reach across and you sort of do like a, uh, I don't know what you fucking call it, whatever. It's like single arm, two single arm tricep extensions at once, sort of across your body. I'm not really going for weight. I mean, this is literally 15 pounds each. What I'm really trying to do is just squeeze at the bottom. I'll see how it feels, but uh, one set on the agenda. But if it feels if it feels sweet, then I'll do two or three. So I like this movement, uh, not only just because of the feel of it, but you can really burn down to like, you know, barely any range of motion, right? It's like in the first few reps, full range, perfect. But as I get weaker, it gets harder and harder to straighten out. And so I feel like I'm barely even fucking moving my arms at all. And doing sets like that, at least, you know, taking yourself to muscular failure I think that's probably a good thing to do, All right? Let's think about this rationally. It's probably a good idea to go hard. Let's finish off with two sets of something. Not sure. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I just had a fucking sigh of relief. My, uh, my TikTok account got like logged out. Uh, I guess it just like reset or something. And then all day today, I kept trying to log back in and it wouldn't work. Dude, I was like, I didn't fucking post anything that fucking inappropriate. <laughs> so, luckily not banned. But oh my god, that makes me... That makes that takes a little bit of relief off my shoulder. I thought I was going to have to start from scratch. But let's get back to what really matters. This fucking tricep pump. So, the last two sets. Just going to burn out with the stack and the straight bar. No drop set, no nothing. The first few reps where I'm strong, I'm gonna to try to really squeeze at the bottom. But as I get weaker, I'm just gonna to try to pump out as many partials as possible. Ugh. 
Okay, you know what? All right. That felt fine, but honestly, even at the end of fucking triceps, that still doesn't feel that heavy. So I think I'm gonna pre-exhaust with the rope and then finish the last set of straight bar. So with the rope, you know, I'm not gonna try to squeeze. I'm just gonna throw the stack around. I like bending over on these two sometimes. Just feels a little bit different. Okay. Ooh. That was a good super set. So yeah, triceps are fucking pumped. Let's get some curls started. For me, by the time I finish triceps, you know, my forearms are already warm, my shoulder area, everything's pretty much warm. I'm ready to curl some weight. The only thing that isn't warm is my fucking biceps. But, you know, I grab the 30s for maybe like five or so, do a couple normal curls, a couple of reverse curls, get a little bit of forearm activation. Then I grab the 55s, you know, three, same thing. 75s, just do two as like a feeler. So let's just throw the 75s around. <laughs> Those first few were actually pretty clean. The last one was pretty fucked. <laughs> uh, let's see that again, except with the uh, the seventies. You know what? That's enough dumbbell curls. Let's move on to cable. So I lied. I'm not moving on to cable. Let's move on to the preacher curl. Uh, just with this specific one, I don't know what it is about it, but I just don't love it. Like when I hold on to these actual handles, I feel like I get a lot of forearm activation. I'm not trying to work my fucking forearms. I'm trying to work my biceps. But rather than just try the machine, not like it, and then say, Oh, whoop de doo you know, machine for me, right? Maybe use a little bit of your freaking brain and figure out a little hack to make it work. So rather than holding on to the actual handle, one thing I like to do, at least with this machine, is I'll slip one of these D handles around and it sort of locks into place right there. And something about this gives my wrist a little bit more like free motion and I can get a lot more bicep activation, right? So if you've got the same problem, I recommend trying it. So it's a little funky. How you do it is you fucking, well, just watch this, right? I'm holding on to this handle, right? So put it like this. So your palm is facing upward, right? And then it should just fucking lock in. Now, obviously that's not the machine's intended use. So maybe I should say, don't do this just in case you get hurt doing it. But this is just what I do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just showing you what I do. Fuck. 
So for me, my right bicep is a little bit weaker slash smaller than the left one. So when I do single arm shit for biceps, I always start with the right arm because it's weaker. So if I can only get 14 reps on the right one, I'm gonna cut the left set off at 14, right? So the left set, left arm will get slightly less intense work so the right one can catch up. But the nature of doing it that way ensures that the right one will never surpass the left one, right? Like if I were to just come in and do workouts, let's say my, uh, let's say your left arm is uh, way bigger than your right one. Like your left bicep is noticeably bigger, right? If you come in and you literally just do a fucking right bicep only workout, you know, eventually once it starts to catch up, it can fucking, well, I guess it's up to your own discretion, but it can fucking catch up and surpass the left one. But if you do like the, uh, like the limiting rep method where you go to failure on the weak arm and then you match the reps on the stronger one, then they should approach equilibrium. And if you've got a muscular imbalance like that shit, like maybe your shoulder is bigger than the other one, just from lifting over time, it's going to start to balance out. Uh, I guess this is more so a tip for the beginner lifter, but don't freak out about it, right? Just keep going hard. It'll figure itself out. Coming back to dumbbell curls. <clears throat> Oh, shit. Ah. All right, you know what? Eh, fuck it. That feels okay, but I want to do some cable stuff now. The stack is a little heavy to do legit curls on, but drop it down to, you know, 100-ish, and, uh, should feel pretty good. So this is like, you know, you're going on the fucking normal cable row, but instead of doing fucking rows and sitting upwards, you fucking lay back on the seat, right? And you do curls. Nothing inherently special about the movement. It's just a different way to do them. So uh, don't be totally alarmed. This isn't like a... If you've been to Planet Fitness, you know that using one of these cables on this one, it's, uh, it makes the weight a little lighter. Right, like this may as well just be a normal cable stack, but whatever. Let's uh, let's just throw this around. No, uh, no special method or anything. Just burn out. So kind of throwing the weight around, but definitely feeling some fatigue in the biceps for sure. Let's get one more here. Honestly, feeling a better pump from these fucking like, you know, crazy, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, swinging curls more than the slow and controlled ones. Whew. Which again, fucking follows a pretty big tip that I've been sort of uh, advocating for, which is to do not only just a variety of sets, but an even mix of you know slow controlled sets, like let's say. Uh, you know, something equivalent to like a, uh, a pec fly for chest, along with heavy shit, which would be more like bench, right? And in the case of, you know, biceps here, that's, you know, going between the, uh, the slow controlled preacher curl and then fucking, you know, fast and erratic cable curls here. You know, some days some shit's just gonna not click for you. Like even different machines might just feel like shit one day and the next, you might love it. So, if you're doing a workout 
or you're doing a specific movement, and let's say you've got 10 sets programmed. Oh, no, no, no. Let's say you got three sets programmed of like some kind of curl, and you, the first set just feels like shit. You're probably better off moving to a different curl that you know you're gonna like. And at the very worst, if you move on to one that you don't like, well then you got some extra variability in your training that day. I think I'm gonna finish the last two sets on that seated curl behind me. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's in frame or not. And uh, then we can check the pump. Really, again, nothing special about the execution with these either. Just gonna try to do, you know, pretty decent range of motion and really burn out. I mean, we got the whole stack on here, so. Hard to go wrong. Oh, yeah. I like this machine a lot. It, uh, whew, it can be a little hard on your wrist sometimes, but uh, I think the pump that we're about to see may speak for itself. Or speak for the machine. Who, get, who gives a fuck? Let's just go check the pump. Let's get the, get the exposure down nice and low. You know, biceps had me in the first half. I was starting to be like, oh, this pump's gonna be kind of shitty. But as soon as I did those fucking laying cable curls, which standing cable curls, it would have been the same shit. Uh, as soon as I got those going, where I was really just fucking blasting the weight around, that kicked them into gear. They're fucking fully pumped now. So let's see what we're working with. Uh, I, should, I gotta bring the measuring tape for next arm day. Maybe there'll be a slight update in size. There we go. Whew. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Dude, yeah, by literally straightening my arms out, like going from here to here. I can fucking feel them, like, tensing up. Jesus. Dude, there is uh, some fucking blood in there. I tell you what. Let's fucking, let's hit some basics here. Oh, that's pretty freaky. I love good crucifix, honestly. Let's see what else is there. There's a decent amount of poses for arms. Oh yeah, fucking the th the the profile picture. All right, let's let's go through a few more, and then we get out of here. No. All right, fuck. Even just flexing them like that. Ah, oh, they're tense. So by now, you know, the triceps are probably still slightly pumped. But they're probably a little bit deflated. It has been about, you know, 30, 45 minutes since they're actually like fully pumped. But buys are peaked right now. Oh. Whew. Yeah, they're even starting to get some thickness on top. Right? I don't know if you really get what I'm saying there, but eesh. <laughs> it, it looks different on the camera too, don't uh that's why I always sort of peek over and see what we're really working with. Are there any other? Let's just see what arms cross looks like. Dude, they almost don't want to cross. Let's see, is this a, this a thumbnail right here? I'll say it feels thumbnail worthy. I'll go, I'll go, I'll find a good pose. But yeah, I mean, fucking arms are pumped as hell. I love a good arm pump. I mean, I love getting pumped in general, but arms, like the difference in how I feel like I look with an arm pump, I don't know, I just love it. Because it really looks extra burly. Like sure, when my chest gets pumped up, it gets like very noticeably bigger. 
I got to do a pump versus unpumped comparison. I'll try to add those in every so often. I know I'm kind of bad at following through with saying when I'm going to do shit, but I don't know, an arm pump, it just adds some fucking extra oomph that no other pump really does for me. At least in my mind, you know, everybody's fucking, uh, everybody's perception of themselves, especially in a bodybuilding context, uh, typically known to get a little funky, typically known to get a little weird, you know, body dysmorphia style. But I, don't know. I definitely don't think I'm lying when I say I feel pretty big. But don't worry. Don't freaking worry. Come on. I can always be bigger. That is the... That's probably the one constant in uh, any good lifter's mind. That they can always be bigger. So, you know, don't, don't read into that too much. You know, don't equate your happiness with how big you are. But... Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's knock into the psychoanalytics of it and uh, just get in the car and slam the cluster dextrin shake. Yeah, get used to that. No more of this dextrose mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I tell you what, I would not mind a Chipotle bowl right now, but it is not... Time is not such that I can acquire one. Pretty freaking sure they are closed. And even if they're not, I just started recording, can't look it up. So whatever. Post-workout, simple carbs, the likes of which I'm gonna, gonna get from some unflavored cluster dextrin mixed with two scoops of protein. So one thing these uh so I for let me just sort of explain. So I've been doing the dextrose, right? And I've this whole time, I've seen comments that are kind of hyping up cluster dextrin. Like even since back in like day 20 and 30. Because uh, they're like, ah, oh, you know, it's easier on your stomach. But, you know, in my mind, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not super picky. So like I was already locked into one thing. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to change it now. But I tell you what, they were freaking right. The cluster dextrin is a bit easier on your stomach. And it definitely doesn't taste so fucking sweet. Holy shit. Now I kind of feel like a fool for doing the dextrose for so long. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, if you want to get a hold of some for yourself, I think you know where to go. Right? Luckily, uh... So, like the hostile supplements, they got two sorts of dextrose. What am I fucking saying? I got, <laughs> I got fucking dextrose on the mind. Cluster dextrin. There's a flavored one, the likes of which I like sort of just drink it throughout the day. And during the lift and the unflavored one, I would not want to mix like chocolate protein powder with the flavored one. That would be, that would probably not be freaking good, but with the unflavored one, it's badass. So buy one tub, get two. Let me think. Let me, uh, let's rewind. Buy one tub, get one free. There we go. With code S A M. Oh, fuck, wait, I'm doing it backwards. S-A-M-C-D-X. There we go. So I, th as people were kind of commenting that the code was a little bit fucked up. Uh, you got to put multiples of two of the fucking tubs in the cart before you apply the code, right? So if you want to use it, you got to get put two tubs in the cart and then put the code in. If you just put one in, the code's not going to do shit, I think. I don't, I'm pretty sure. But uh, yeah, whatever. So I, that's a limited time thing. That's not forever. So if you're considering some post-workout simple carbs, the likes of which are going to help refuel your muscles, and the likes of which I'm doing, then I'd recommend checking it out. So let's uh, let's slam this and get the fuck out of here. It's kind of weird because it, uh, like, it's not sweet. Like, it's not as sweet as the, the dextrose was. But it's a little bit thicker. Interesting. Very interesting. But, you know, 
I'm sure you can tell I'm a little bit less distressed. <laughs> you could make a fucking hundred clip compilation of me slamming a dextro shake and then thinking, or then going like, ugh, ugh, like freaking out because how gross it was. Oh my god. So, wah, bah, bah, bah. yeah, arms fucking got pumped as hell. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, that first half of the bicep workout, honestly, I wasn't really feeling it. You know, like, my energy levels were there. I was plenty motivated. Like, I was, you know, good and hype, had the music going. But I just wasn't really feeling my fucking biceps. Well, obviously I was feeling them, but they weren't really getting that, uh, that, like, pumped up tight feeling that usually, I'd say by about you know, set three or four, you should start to develop, right? Like, obviously, you're not going to be fully pumped until around maybe set, uh, well, like I fucking recommend ending your workouts after around eight to 11 sets. So you should be fully pumped by then. But it's not like that pump just happens right at the end of the set or right at your last two sets or something, right? You gradually get more pumped throughout the workout. And for me, today triceps was like zero pump in the beginning steady increase maybe it was kind of uh like plateaued at the end when i was fully pumped but biceps was like kind of slow in the beginning but once i started doing those cable curls with uh where i was just you know throwing around a lot of weight really just manhandling and pump sort of started to skyrocket so last thing you want to do is give up on a lift just because it feels a little bit funky, you know? Like, it's easy to fucking get a crazy pump if every exercise fucking feels perfect. You know, you move on from one movement to the next, set to set, weight to, uh, you know, different weights going nice and heavy. If it feels good as fuck, and you're in, you're just totally in the zone, then it's easy to get a fucking good workout in. But if stuff feel, kind of feels off, you know, you're not really getting that, uh, that feedback that you want, I could definitely see how somebody could sort of say, uh, I guess this is just a fucking off day, uh, whatever, I guess I'll just... Well, best case scenario, in that, with that mindset, they're like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just you know go through the motions in the last few sets. And then worst case scenario, right, they would let themselves say... They would let them... Blah, blah, blah. They would tell themselves, all right, well, fucking buys aren't feeling it today, let's just fucking be done, right? No. Stupid. Yeah. It's not over until it's over. So make sure to go hard on all your fucking sets. So tomorrow's going to be a leg day. I will probably go to uh, Metro Fitness. They've got a really fucking cool machine hack squat that I like. It uh, It's not plate loaded. It's like a machine stack. And something about like the strength curve, it just feels super good. So, you'll get a glimpse of that tomorrow. Mm. My plans for tonight. <sighs> Gonna be go home, eat some food. Probably eat a little bit more food. Uh, I played a game of Warzone earlier today. Uh, fucking, I did not win. I got like 20th, and then I was like, okay, no more of this. Fucking 30 minutes down the drain. So yeah, home, food, food, vitamins, bed. Pretty simple. Pretty freaking simple. And highly beneficial for gains. So for those curious about the bulk, in all honesty, I think you're going to see spring bulk day one, day 200. I, I really am I'm starting to think that that's going to that that's gonna happen <laughs> so don't get too excited for the cut yet and I gotta I gotta try to keep pushing it a little longer but then two-ish months time should be nice and lean nice and diced so keep an eye out for that but still more bulks to come still more heavy lifts and skin splitting pumps to come before then so hopefully you are uh well if you're in the 30 percent of you guys which actually have been doing your cardio 
badass. Good for you. And hopefully you're on the, you're just on the edge. You're in that 70% uh, population who's just they're thinking about doing their cardio. Maybe they might start. Maybe they might start this week. Hopefully that's you, and hopefully you follow through with it. I, I mean, I guess I can uh, say it enough, but it's it kind of feels like I can't say it enough, right? Do your freaking cardio. Right? Be a lean. Well, I guess not inherently lean, but be a more efficient machine, right? Keep your heart pumping. Be nice and uh, have a solid amount of endurance for your actual workouts. You know, don't get totally gassed after one set. Increase your metabolism. Come on, I've said this a million times, right? You should start to get the idea soon enough. Uh, in terms of the, oh my God, the, some, some fucking comments are like, I would do cardio, but it's so boring. Literally, I read a comment verbatim. I would do cardio, but it's so fucking boring. What do you expect? <laughs> what do you fucking expect, dude? You know, like, I think if you're doing cardio where you sit on the fucking treadmill and you don't play on your phone and you just sit there and fucking walk for, you know, 45 minutes or an hour, yeah, I think that could be fucking pretty boring, right? So, I don't know, maybe just play on your phone, right? You're still going to get your fucking cardio done while you're playing Clash Royale or watching anime or scrolling on TikTok. It's not like you're doing a working set where you actually have to focus, right? Cardio, low intensity, steady state cardio, 30 minutes ish, you know, break a sweat every morning. That does not require your full attention, you know? Fucking, uh, <laughs> it really doesn't, right? Every time I do it, I don't sit on the bike and I think to myself, all right, let's fucking, come on, let's do it. Come on! And I start pedaling. I just fucking sit down. And I pull out my phone, I fucking play around. And then I look up, oh, 30 minutes done, alright, let's get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, that comment struck a chord with me. Ugh. <laughs> it's like you're, you're gonna sit at home playing on your phone anyway. Uh, yeah. Who knows? I said this in the last video, the cardio video, where of course I'd be talking about cardio. But uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So, I'll keep telling you to do it, but uh, it's up to you to actually take that advice. So, yeah, but yeah, back to what I was saying about actually actually ending the video. Hope you had a good lift today. Hope you ate your food, took your multivitamin, had a uh, did your cardio, like I already said, and uh, hopefully you're gonna go to bed at a reasonable hour and get some solid rest before you lift tomorrow so i will see you next time god damn it